Hey guys, today I'm going to take you with me as I rebuild my beloved Sleepy Hollow Scarecrow. He's been outside year round for a few years now and he's in pretty bad shape. He needs a new body. Um, I'll be using some fallen branches that I just have in my yard, but there will be a detailed list of what you need to make your very own scarecrow down below. So it's very important to pre-drill the holes before you actually use the driver to drive in the screws. So I'll be using a drill, a driver, driver bits, and three and a half inch screws. First, I'm going to lay out my body, shoulder, and support branches the way that I want them. Now we have that laid out. What I'm going to do is attach here, here, and over here. I'm going to cut that, that one off, though. Um, and I'll probably bring his head down just a little bit, because I don't want to have to take too much off the bottom so that he can stay as tall as he is. Okay, so we're going to attach everything by pre-drilling holes for the screws and then driving in the screws. I'm using three and a half inch screws here. Those are the only ones I have that are long enough. Um, and I'll start by attaching the body branch to the shoulder branch, leaving about six inches or so above the shoulder for his neck. You can see here that I am sinking the screw down into the pre-drilled hole of the shoulders, just attaching it, I guess, right where his throat would be. And I'm just going to turn him over and find a good spot for the back support branch. I'm going to attach these supports, one end at the shoulder um, and the other end down sort of toward the middle, upper middle of the back of the body branch. And I just sort of like to find a kind of natural notch, if I can, for the wood to sort of like sit into each other. Okay, so now that should be much, much sturdier um, than just that one screw at the top of his throat. Um, so I'll just repeat that on the other side, with the other support branch. And there you go. If you have anything like sticking up and you want to take it off, you can. I'm going to keep those pieces at the bottom, but the ones at the top, I'm going to lop that off. Okay, so now I just need to attach his arm branches. So I turn him over for that. Um, these are my arm branch options. So clearly we're going to go with the bigger ones on the left there. And I'm just going to attach them in the same way to the front of the shoulder branch. Lay it out and make sure they are positioned where I want them to and just screw them in. And there he is. Well, his, his new body anyway. He's really, really tall. And because the branch is a little bit curved, I'm gonna cut it off at the bottom so it sits in the ground a little bit better. But this, um, forward curve right here in the rib cage where his little ribs will be is actually works pretty well. As far as his head is concerned, I tried to clean it up a little bit and wash it and bring that orange color back, but it's been sun bleached and really all I ended up doing to him was touching up with black paint inside of his eyes and that's about as good as we're gonna get. But it's okay, he looks weathered, he looks spooky and still happy. For this jack-o'-lantern head in particular, it's not really carvable in the middle. So I had to attach it with a couple of brackets, but you could just stick it on if you were actually using a pumpkin. And then this is just a sheet and I tend to tuck it 
um, sort of between his ribs where they will be uh, and his back supports. I just attach the ribs in the same way, random, three or four random ribs, not too spaced out, but not too close together. And you can do this before, but I just didn't have them ready before I put him up, so. Also, you can leave them just like this if you don't mind seeing the screws, but there are ways that you can hide the screws, which we will be doing. Um, I'm just sort of like tying, tucking and tying his um, sheet cloak behind the ribs. And now we're going to go on and hide these little mistakes, these little screws. Which I generally like to do by sort of um, just having a long collar or like a cravat hanging down or some twine. So this is what I'm going to be using. I'm going to use the grass in his sort of collar tie cravat thing. And then I'm going to be using twine around his ribs to sort of disguise the fact that we actually screwed him together instead of, you know, just using twine. I don't really try to make this very tight. I'm just trying to make it so it doesn't um, show the screw and so that it doesn't come undone, I guess. I wrap it around several times until you can't see the screw anymore and then I just sort of like tuck it under don't even really tie it and there you go can't see the screw anymore I also like to throw some creepy cloth over the sheet it looks very rustic and this is just a sort of scrap of that sheet that I use for his tie um, it doesn't have to be anything special this is just a another bigger scrap of that same sheet that I use for um, to look more like a collar you could make it stiffer or bigger if you wanted but I don't want to this is just fine and dandy for me this is enough so I take that and tie it around his throat conveniently hiding that screw and then I'm going to be placing the grass in the middle of that and sort of like fanning it out and fluffing it out it's not like a ton of grass and it's not very long so I kind of want to make the most of it and then I just take the length, the scrap, sort of scarf part, and put it around the back of his neck. It would be a lot easier with two people, but you can do it. You can do it with one person. <laughs> and then I'll just bring it around the front and tighten it, make any sort of last minute like fluffing adjustments, and then give it a, a good tie. And there you go. Perfect sort of disheveled cravat that hides all the screws. It makes him look very cute too. And then the last thing to do is put more creepy cloth on him as much as you want. I like to put it in his hands too so they're sort of like hanging down but I definitely had to get on a ladder to do that. But it's optional. You don't have to use it. I just feel like it gives him an extra little spooky flair. In the end, I really do think it is the attention to details that make this kind of sleepy hollow scarecrow come to life. <laughs>